Okay, we're finally about to create something, and we'll start with a rectangle and a rounded rectangle. Now, your main creation toolset sits right here underneath this letter T, which, by the way, initializes the type tool. Just a quick little note here before we start. Wherever you see a little black triangle at the bottom right corner of a tool icon, well, that means that there is something more to it. I mean, if you click and hold this triangle, a flyout submenu will be shown with new tools. This works not only for shape tools, but every tool with a little triangle sign next to it. In this case, if I click and hold this rectangle icon right here, I'll be able to see all my creation tools. I have rectangle and rounded rectangle. I got ellipse, I got polygon, star, and the flare tool. In this video, we'll focus on rectangle and rounded rectangle tools. But pay attention as techniques we'll use, we can apply when creating ellipses, stars, etc. Okay, let's create our first rectangle. You can either click this icon or use the shortcut, which is the letter M. And this shortcut comes in really handy, so it's really worth learning. Now the real fun begins. I guess the easiest way to create a rectangle is to simply click and drag like so. If I hold down the shift key, I'll constrain the proportions of an object and in this case I'll create a square. If I alt click, I'll start drawing a rectangle from its center point. If I hold down the alt key plus the shift key, I'll start creating a square from its center point. And if I hold down the spacebar while dragging, I'll be able to move the rectangle around. Again, click and drag to create a rectangle, drag and hold down the shift key to create a square, drag and hold down the alt key to start creating from the center point, and hold down the spacebar to reposition the rectangle. Of course, there's an alternative way to create a rectangle, or any other shape for that matter. But you already expected that, haven't you? Uh, it's for more precise creation. First I'll clean up my artboard. I'll select everything and hit the backspace to delete everything. Now with the rectangle tool active, click anywhere on your artboard and you'll get this dialog box where you can enter the values for width and height. And if I click this icon to the right, I'll constrain the proportions. I'll type in 200 for width and 200 for height to get a square, like so. So this is an alternative way of creating a rectangle in this case, but clicking on the artboard with any creation tool active will give you a dialog box with some more options to create a shape. Ok, now let's move to the rounded rectangle tool. I'll clean up the artboard again. Now, round rectangle sits under the rectangle tool and it can be created, well, just like the rectangle. But what makes it distinct is, of course, the rounded corners. If I click and drag on my artboard, I'll start drawing a rounded rectangle. And if I start pressing the up or down arrow on my keyboard, I'll adjust the roundness of the corners. And if I hold down the arrow key long enough, I'll eventually create a regular rectangle or a regular ellipse, a circle. For you precise guys, there's of course an alternative way of creating a rounded rectangle as well. Simply click to get a dialog box where you can enter width, height and corner radius values. So as an example, again, I'll type in 200 for width, 200 for height and 10 for corner radius. This gives me a square with nicely rounded corners that could be great for app logos, for example. Ok, in the next video we'll create some ellipses, polygons and stars, and the techniques we just learned will apply when creating those shapes, so don't go away!